Nice. Well, we're being told that the only ways to get out of, well, the only way to get out of Ramona at this point is the 67. The 78 was just cut off for you. No Wildcat Canyon Road because... Well, there it is, guys. There's the fire. It's incredible. It's really close. This is very scary. In that direction, you see the wild animal park. And, uh, oh, man. It's just nutty. Just nutty. We might get an evacuation order. It's just crazy. Very, very crazy. Got some friends down in that area. It's just awful. What you're looking at there is, uh, well, where the wild animal park is, or where it used to be anyway. I don't know if it's there anymore. The San Diego Wild Animal Park, it's, it's looking like that might be gone. There's some transformers that were popping all over there, just getting blown up. There was a down power line. The whole city of Ramona was uh, ordered to evacuate. A lot of them were coming down Highway 78, and uh, that down power pole just went right over the road from what I understand and 78 is not a safe way to go through that corridor is gone so people coming from Ramona they gotta go uh, another way down the 67 but there's another fire down there close to the border of Mexico this is very very scary in between that fire and my house is the San Pasqual Valley after that you know we just might get emergency 911 uh, calls, reverse 911 calls that say that we need to evacuate our house. I got two kids sleeping right now. They don't know. I don't want them to know yet. My wife's got some bags packed. That's a good thing. I'm supposed to go to work early tomorrow. Well, early today, but you know what? That, that just ain't happening. Oh, this is just so scary, so crazy. I got friends that live right down there at the bottom of that valley, right where those Right where those lights are, you can see the uh, those lights there, right on the side there. Oh, yeah, look at that. You can see the those lights. Those are traffic lights, and uh, right down in there, I just spoke to him today. That's my buddy. He lives down there. I'm I'm very worried for him. I told him to give me a call if he needed some help getting evacuated, but he hasn't called me. So I don't know what the deal is. Um, folks, this is this is uh, very surreal right now. I mean, it's biblical. It's biblical. Think of an invading army. There's nothing that the fire crew can do. You know, we're having gusts of 80 miles an hour in these uh, Santa Ana winds. It's uh. You know, the the, the, uh, the fire crew can do nothing to stop it, nothing. You know, all they can do is uh, is flee, to tell us to flee. And tomorrow, you know, and this is the nighttime. That's when the winds are supposed to die down. But again, you know, it's like 25 miles an hour with, you know, 70 mile an hour gusts of wind. That's like hurricane force winds. And, uh, well, it's just blown through. Uh, tomorrow, it's supposed to be worse. Um, it's very, very crazy, very scary. What more can I say? I mean, it's just, it's a nightmare. We got all kinds of people trying to take a look to see what's going on. I mean, you know, you, you saw a flare up just a second ago. Um, it's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is our home and it's all see there we go. There's uh, some more flames And that saddle right there. That's uh that's a, I believe that's a San Pasqual battleground um, museum and um, Who knows I mean it I don't know if that's there You know there was a San Pasqual Academy there. I did my Eagle Scout project over there and uh, who knows if you know that was years ago, but you know, you want those things to survive for posterity's sake. So I don't think that that's going to be around. It may or may not be. I really don't know if the animal park is there. I mean, that is 
that is where the wild animal park is, right in that saddle area. So, it's just unreal. Here comes uh, another gust of wind here. A big gust, I think uh, that's maybe what the flare-up was over there. So now, uh, you know, the more wind that comes through, the more that uh, the, the fire gets fuel. Yeah, I mean, you can just hear the wind. It's crazy. Sometimes it'll even bowl you over if you're not careful in the right situation. It's madness. It's madness. I just feel very sorry for all the people who live there, all the people who lost their lives. And it's eerie. This is the four-year anniversary of the Cedar Fire that San Diego was burning in 2003. Well, four years to this day. And here we are again. Here we are again. You can hear the wind now. It's just really picking up. All the trees above me are crackling. I mean, this place is a tinderbox. We're not supposed to go over any closer and take a look, and you know what? I'm not going to. That fire is close. You know, you go to church, you see some smoke, and then you wonder, oh, where's the fire? You come home, you know, you spend the day. All of a sudden, Ramona, one part of Ramona is evacuating, then all of Ramona is evacuating, and then the San Pasqual Valley, now they're saying Bear Valley. So here we are. All we could do is pray, I guess. There's not much else to do. And, uh, oh man, that gust is so, uh, so strong there, it almost blew over my camera. So, um, yeah. Um, I'm not sure how well the camera's picking up the, the, the imagery here because it is pretty dark, but you know, I, I'm looking, that hill is a, is, a, is a large hill and you can see that the smoke coming up is just lit up by this maniacal flame. You know, it's like a hellfire over there. I mean, you know, I'm estimating that that's uh, 100 feet. Um, you know, the orange part and then beyond that, uh, who knows? Who knows how high that is?